What up there, roguelike fans? It has been a very, very long time since I have, um, well, done any rogueliking. Aside from working on my own game, Caverns of Zeskazian 2, I just put out a new version of that a few days ago. I've been working on it steadily for the last few days as well. Um, just to fill you in over the course of 45 seconds as to where I've been, um, a couple of months ago, my wife and I took off to the Banff Springs Hotel, which is high in the Rocky Mountains, lovely place um, where we were there for the Banff New Media Festival to pitch a f feature film and a TV show, both of which got some bites from some very big companies, so we'll see how that plays out over the next uh, months and years. Um, we were there for two weeks, did some horseback riding, I stupidly ran on trails where I was warned away afterwards because of the high bear presence, um, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, when I got back, of course, I resumed my day job, um, and at the same time started a second day job, which absorbed a lot of time, and at the same time as all of that, was hired to work on visual effects for two separate films, and hired to be the narrator for a, an audiobook. Um, the audiobook is done, the work on the two feature films is done, all of it was successful, but it did take up a lot of time for a while, as you can expect, and just as all three of those came to a close, I caught COVID lovely. Um, was down for quite a while with that, so now that I'm more or less back in the swing of things, I thought, why not play a roguelike? Um, and we're going to do that right now. <clears throat> so what we're looking at today is a game called Grog. I'm going to turn down my volume a bit just so I'm not uh, spiking quite so much for you, uh, if I was. Um, a game called Grog. Um, you can see right up here, it's a fairly recent game. It came out in 2018. Um, I think this is still version 1. Well, it is, according to the top, um, and I've read online there might be a few bugs left in it, but whatever, that's true of most roguelikes. Uh, you can see the name of the the gentleman who made this, Thomas Biscop. Uh, for those who don't know, that's a very famous name. That is the gentleman who made Adom. Adom being one of the more popular and larger and more complex roguelikes uh, that mankind has ever known. A game that I have fired up on my own occasionally to try but never recorded, and a game that is complex enough that until I have the time to really devote to learning it, there'd be no point in my recording it for you. This, on the other hand, is quite the opposite in terms of what it's trying to achieve. Um, Thomas was apparently at a roguelike celebration and played the original rogue and realized he really liked it and decided to make a game of a similar level of complexity to that but his own game you can see right here we're not after the we're not after the amulet of yendor we're after the throne of immortality i can tell you there are 25 levels instead of 26 there are definite differences this is not rogue but it shouldn't be a lot more complex than that and that is exactly what i'm in the mood for today um so we can type in a character name here um one of the things that's interesting to note, apparently your character generation is based on the name you type in. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm understanding this correctly, let me just read what it said about that. Um, la 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 la. Ultra flexible character generation. E.g. you enter a textual name, gender, and type, and your attributes will be fixed depending on these choices. I don't know if that means the name is the influence or not. I don't know. Let's give it a different name, though. Brack is what it's suggesting. Um, let me just fire up my window itself. And I'll just, I'll just start with something. In case it influences stuff, let's find out what kind of a warrior myself would be. I'm male. Uh, correct. What would be that type? Now, here's one thing. I, I, I know there's a grog um, when I didn't, played this for five seconds earlier, um, like a few days ago. This was the type I used. I do have a readme file here, but it doesn't seem to reveal... I do have a readme. I don't have a readme file. What the fuck am I lying about? I don't have a readme file for this. Um, yeah, I don't see anything about um, about different types. So I'm assuming we can only be a grog. Um, give me half a second. Voila. I'm not going to spend a lot of time reading you this, but I'm going to read it to you really quickly. Um, play hard and fast, a dungeon consisting of 25 screen size levels, four monster types on level one with plus two new monster types per level. One of the new monsters always will be more powerful as far as combat goes, the other type will sport some challenging special power. Special room types starting at dungeon level three, ghosts, former player characters showing up as monsters. Revenge monsters, monsters that manage to kill a player, receive a name special powers or power boosts for consecutive kills and return in later games. That's kind of neat. Inventory size is strongly limited. 
yay, thank you, I love that. It's true in caverns too, and I think it's one of the most important features of a roguelike. Include an item ID, but allow for auto ID after some time passes. Hunger, prayers, tons of highly variable items. Jesus, sorry. Ultra flexible character generation, e.g. you enter a textual name, I just read that to you before. Add a personal note about the fate of your character to your high score entries. And a straightforward goal. Reach level 25, find the throne of immortality, and escape the dungeon. Fun fact, in a way, Grog is ultra old school. Why? Because it becomes harder and harder to defeat, and thus win, the longer you play. Because more and more ghosts and revenge monsters will wait for the player, making life more and more miserable. Quite a difference to these comfy modern games and meta designs that push the player even nearer to winning. Um, cool. That sounds awesome, especially given this is the first time I'm really playing, so it shouldn't be too hard. I guess we're going to be a grog, because what the fuck else can I do? Grog. Morituri te salutante. Te salutante, sorry. Jeff, the male grog, prepare thyself to explore the dungeon of despair. I wonder if we had typed in something other than grog, if we just made up a word. Like, we're going to be a flame master, if that would like have an effect on the character design. Algorithmically or something, I don't know. Um... Last thing I want to point out here is that Grog, derogatory title for a seasoned warrior, developed from Gronyard. Um, if you don't know what that word means, it's uh, people who are really into complex games. It was a term back in the 70s and 80s, maybe 60s. Let's go. How do I do more? Space? Space. Jeff descends into the depths of the Dungeon of Despair. Press H to see the help texts. A stair is leading upwards. There's a B beside me. So we can see down here, Jeff has armor class 16, hit points 19 out of 19, strength 15, dexterity 12, constitution 15. I'm guessing there are no spells, given I don't see an intelligence stat. Didn't mention there are prayers. We have piety too. We're on dungeon level 1. We have no money. We have no M. Maybe magic. We already have one experience point, apparently, unless it's what level we are, 1 out of 250. I don't know. Let's, um, let's press H. <clears throat> here we go. Instead of the classic question mark. Grog is controlled by case-sensitive key presses. WASD, so it's form, forward movement, or use the um, arrow keys, which I will use as I am right-handed. Shift and an arrow key is move quickly. I'm guessing that means like running a straight line until you hit something. I don't know. Space is to wait. Uh, period is to wait until you're fully healed, so it gets you heal over time. Enter or R to interact. For instance, use the stairs. E or I to manage your inventory. C or comma C to pick up items. I'm not sure if Thomas Biscop is of a, of a different nationality. I've heard his voice before, and it seems to me he had a um, an accent, um, but I can't remember what that accent was. I don't know what C would stand for for picking up items. Co collect, maybe? Collect from the floor? Comma is just a very common uh, one in a lot of roguelikes. F or U to use item. U makes sense. I'm not sure what F is about. Fumble with. Z to zap wand, X or T to throw an item, P to pray for help, M for monster enemy list, all right, um, and blah, 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 configure options, display game version for now, I'm playing in a very small window, but you won't notice that. Oh, there's more here. More prompts, character generation, your name, gender, and type, deterministically generate your initial attributes and starting equipment, feel free to experiment and define an adventurer that suits your particular needs. That's actually pretty cool. I've never seen that before. That's interesting. I'm assuming we could type in any kind of class we want. And, and any name we want, and any sex we want, we could be neuter, or just, we could be monkey sex, I guess, and it wouldn't matter, we'd, we'd get something weird out of it. Um, <clears throat> AC, how hard it is to hit, higher is better, hit points, your life energy. Strength, raw physical might affects the number of items you can carry, as well as hit probabilities and damage in melee combat. Dexterity affects armor class and how fast you move in comparison to monsters. Constitution, health, and toughness affects your hit points. Additionally, the game shows your current dungeon level D, the amount of gold carried the number of moves, XO, that's what M is, and your experience. Experience shows your current level, f I see, followed by a slash, followed by the number of experience points needed to advance to next level. Experience is gained from killing monsters. Finally, piety is shown, which basically is an indicator on whether the player can safely utter more prayers or not via the P command. Hints. Let's read this. Run if you can't win. Think smart. There are surprisingly many strategies available to get out of tight situations. Pray in times of need. One second, my lovely cat, Lenius, wants out. Come here, bub. Here. Exunt. Or I guess exit, because there's only one of you. Go for it. Flee. Um, and we also were dealing with him over the last few months. He uh, he had a very bad health scare. He, uh, he stopped eating, like, entirely. And we did everything we could to fix it. We got him dental surgery. We 
spent four thousand or five thousand dollars on different tests and stuff, and nothing came out um, to indicate what was going on. And finally, we just in desperation said, "Let's give him steroids," because his sister went through the same thing, and steroids saved her. We've been doing that for a couple of weeks, and he's eating again. So he's kind of skeletal, but he's putting back on weight. I think at the very least, he's eating of his own volition. So that's fucking great. Anyway, back to the game. Think smart. There are surprisingly many strategies. Yep. Pray in times of need, but pray sparingly, because your god might get annoyed when pestered too often. I wonder if that piety too means we can pray twice. There's no indication yet for me as to what that means. Maybe it's just a number of times you can do it. Carrying items for prolonged periods of time will identify them. Remember that you can also throw stuff at monsters, that's right, with T or or X, I think. Um, and a bunch of thanks, including to Slashy, Santiago Zapata. We've seen a number of his uh, roguelikes on this channel. The last, I think, was Elite International Detective. We looked at it a few times. We may look at it again because he's done more work on it since, but not right now. Uh, for being the torch bearer of the roguelike world, etc. More. These other names I don't know, so I'm not going to look at it right now. I'm not discounting them. I just don't have time to sit here and read them for you because you'll get annoyed with me for doing so. I'm going to press escape and see if that gets out of this. It did. Um, let's try the M for monsters. Enemy, giant bat. All right, let's attack it. Jeff misses the giant bat. The giant bat misses Jeff. I did it again. I did it again. It hit me for three. Yikes. And I killed it. I'm press period to wait. Oh, a giant rat came out of nowhere. Let's kill it. There. Oh, I see. The, the experience, if you look down here, experience is counting downwards. That's kind of neat. That's a neat way to handle it. So we're on experience level one. We need 207 more, and that will continue to decline. That's kind of a cool way to handle it. I've never seen it handled that way before. It makes sense. Cleverness, sir. I will, of course, include a link to where you can get this for free. I'm guessing it's a goblin. Let's press M. Yep, a goblin. Killed it. The giant rat moves toward you threateningly. Is this step down until it comes towards me? Oh, I had to press more. And then I'll attack it. Got me for two. Fucking rat. All right, let's, uh, let's rest again with a period. I fully recover after 31 turns. I don't know if there's a hunger clock or anything I have to worry about in regards to that. A scroll labeled Umbar is lying here. Let's get that. Got it. I wonder if I press read. No, it's a U, perhaps, to interact. Let's try U and see what it says. Yeah, okay, so U would allow us to interact with stuff. I feel greatly endangered. Oh, I wonder if that means that that's a trap. I'm not going to touch that just yet in case that means like, I have a sense of... I can sense traps, maybe? Maybe because I'm playing a Jeff the Grog? Maybe. This is pretty cool so far. I'm enjoying it. Unusual um, color scheme. I think you, there might be ways to um, configure the color scheme to your own liking, but I have no problem with the default. That's kind of cool. I haven't seen this particular color scheme since... Um, Net hack to the quest for pants, I think. Let's try the uh, fast move and see what that did. How, how do we do that again? Shift and a movement key. Let's try that. Shift and left. Yep, there you go. Nicely done, Thomas. I'm, I'm thinking this is pretty cool so far. I wonder if this guy's asleep. There we got him. Let's press space to let him come towards us. Oh, he's a tricky little fucker. Come towards me. He's too clever for me. Aha. Got him. <clears throat> we need 99 more experience to level up, guys. It doesn't say anything about... See, it doesn't say anything about endangered here. Let's step on it. An iron ration is lying here. Let's get that. I'll go back and, and look at the... um At that other food... Potential food item in a minute. Oh, Miss York. Let's be ready to run if we have to. So far, we're winning. We killed it. And we only need 58 now. So it's worth um 31 right? Yeah. No. I don't remember. I don't remember what I needed before. 99? 41? I'll go back near that thing in a minute and see if it still says a sense of danger. Got ourselves a murky potion. Let's take a dagger. What are we using? Leather armor, a round shield, and a mace. I'm guessing the highlighted means we're, you know, I guess he worn, hefted, and wielded. Alright, that's cool. Leather armor, a round shield, and a mace. I like it. I'm really enjoying this so far. <laughs> Pretty simple uh, game so far, but I'm really enjoying it.
Killed that bat. There's the stairs down, guys. If it was a sense of danger because there was like a monster lurking, um, it'll probably be lurking somewhere over here, right? This is where we were when we felt that. So let's go, let's go in that direction anyway, foolishly. I'm not sure. I don't know enough about the game to know. Oh, the goblin. Okay, that's fine. Just a goblin. Yeah. Let's get that red potion. I don't know how much I can carry. You might start chugging stuff eventually. Just to get rid of it from the uh, inventory. Learn a bit more about the game. I feel greatly endangered again. So I'm going to get... It obviously has something to do with that stair or that square. I don't know if that's a function again. Uh, is it because I chose this name with this sex with this class? And that is... Um, the character starts with some sort of skill that can let him detect stuff? Or if it's automatic? I don't know. Well, let's try going down. Do you think it's the uh, greater than? I forget already. Or is it use? U for use. Nope, not U for use. The hell was it? <clears throat> Interact. Of course, enter. Good. I'm going to guess a kobold, but it could be a kestrel. Let's, uh, let's look at um, M for monster. Kobold. I'm going to guess that's easier to kill than a goblin, and the goblins haven't been too bad yet. Oh, Jesus! Jeff misses the kobold. The kobold calls forth hidden brethren. Um, so we're going to attack to the east to try and get into a corner to at least give ourselves a fighting chance here. I hit for 6 damage. It's killed. I gain a level. Plus 10 hit points. So that's pretty nice. Let's attack again to the east. So far they're not hurting me, and I'm hurting them. Alright, so at least... Oh, our, our back tingles. Tingling back. Don't know what that means. Let's attack to the north. I wonder if it means there's like a secret door here or something? I don't know. Killed another one. Alright, they're gone from the north. If they stay in a straight line, we're fine. I think despite this massive ambush, which can happen in Caverns of Zeskazian 2, incidentally, there is an event called Kobold Ambush, where kobolds suddenly surround you. They're the only monster that can do that. <clears throat> As I said, I have been working a lot on Caverns 2. I released the newest version a few days ago, including the new, not new, the reinstated survival class. So something to do with it being in this area, my back tingles. Let's press period to wait. Let's get away from the tingling. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I guess it means there's a secret door nearby. I become hungry. Let's, um, let's eat. Help. I'll probably use. You for use. Let's eat an iron ration. A bit stale, but very nourishing. Nice, okay. Let's continue, because we do have a time limit, apparently, a hunger clock. Kind of weird that the um, the highlighted bar ends prematurely here. I wonder if you get one more prayer per level. We're at three now. Like, uh, per character level or per dungeon level. Let's keep an eye open for both of those ideas. Um, what was I going to say to you? Um, yeah, I'm working on caverns now as well. Um, found another secret door. And, uh, yeah, I just it reinstated the Adventurer class. You can't play as that yet. The Survivor class is in the, the one that's been uploaded. Um, but the Adventurer class is not yet. Uh, but I've been playing with it and introduced a ton of new spells and uh, some new items and stuff. It's, it's going really well. But I do have to get to work on other things besides caverns. I've done um, 16 damage to it so far. It's still alive. 21 damage did it. A scroll labeled Acabras. And I'm threatened. Let's move west. And when I'm here, it says threatened. Interesting. Again, guessing there's a pit trap or something. I feel greatly endangered. I wonder if you're within two squares, it says threatened, and one square is greatly endangered. I'm going to go south nonetheless. Yeah, it, it died down as I left. So I think threatened implies there's a danger within two squares. Greatly endangered means within one square is my guess. That's kind of a neat feature. I've never seen that in a roguelike before. Let's press spacebar to let this guy come towards us. Killed that goblin. Killed that kobold. Let's get the orange potion. We won't use anything until we have to, because um, it did say it'll pseudo, it'll identify it for us if we carry it long enough, right? <clears throat> Kobold and an orc. Alright, let's not wait forever. Yo, you little dodgy motherfucker. 
Jesus. You buggers. <coughs> Pardon me. We're doing okay, I think. I mean, I don't know. How the hell would I know? Let's get a broadsword. Let's look at our inventory again. A mace, which was 1d6 plus 3. I love that it tells you the details here. So far, I'm loving this game. Pretty simple game, but I'm fucking loving it. Let's press... No, not W. Let's press U for wield. Um, let's wield. No, let's press E for equip. Let's try equipping a broadsword. I need to unequip something first. Let's equip C to unequip it. And then J. So we don't know the stats on this yet. I wonder if we use it, if it'll tell it to us. I can't complain about my mace plus three. Incidentally, this just filled back in in black. It was white before. Don't know what that means. Good, we need food. Let's grab that. Uh oh. Okay, we're gonna um quickly. Fuck. We're gonna rewield our mace because it didn't seem like the broadsword was hitting so well. Fuck you. Let's unequip the broadsword. Equip the mace. Hit escape. All right, we are in some trouble. Let's try P for pirate prey. What do you want to pray for? No, not yet. Let's press escape. All right, kill one of them. Kill another one. Kill another one. I got a level. Plus nine hit points, and I feel tougher. Plus one constitution. Cool. Killed another kobold. Killed another kobold. Let's retreat into this hallway. Uh, all the way into the hallway. I didn't pray. I didn't need to. It looks like uh, we're at piety four now. So it looks like every time you level up, you get another P for piety. I'm guessing that's how many times you can pray. It's weird that this bar keeps um, shrinking and changing. Minor graphical glitch. I don't know if Thomas is aware of or, or cares about. I, I'm loving this game. Another, another orange potion. My back tingles. Um, secret door. Yeah, okay, so back tingles does imply you're near to a secret door. I kind of like this. Well, again, I wonder if it's the character class I'm, or, you know, the combination of name and class, etc. Or if all characters will function this way. An apple. Let's get that. Uh-oh. Let's not go east. It did say I feel threatened. Uh, let's go west. Son of a bitch. Let's go... Okay, yeah, yeah. The kobold suddenly moves very carefully, probably indicating the presence of a trap again. Did say something about threatened. I'm going to have to get some water in a second. Actually, we'll record for another seven minutes, then we'll call this an episode and continue with another episode, because I think this one might be a few uh, episodes long, is my guess. Um, let's keep an eye on our health. We got them all. Let's press... Oh, our hit points are coming back. Here's the pro. Let's go north. Let's not go east because this isn't worth feeling threatened there. Oh, he's another kobold. I don't know if we're up for another ambush, but we got it. Let's check out this northern passage before we continue. Definitely pays to not move too fast here because we're getting these weird, um, you know, statements and warnings about secret doors and what did that say when I'm on it? I just said door. Um about, you know, secret doors and, and traps. I'm guessing, of course, for the traps. <clears throat> I mean, we'll take it for now, right? Ooh, what we got here? Studded leather. Let's try equipping that. Um, I have no idea if there are cursed items or anything in this. So, AC2 from the leather armor. I don't know if it'll immediately tell us in the brackets what we have. Let's see if our AC changes. Let's equip the leather armor to get rid of it. Put us down to 14. Let's equip studded leather. Oh, so it's plus 3. Okay. No, as soon as you put it on. Um, that's good. 
We can probably drop that leather soon, but let's carry it for now in case something can happen to your armor. I wouldn't know, right? Zombie equals destroyed. Where were those stairs? Let's head back. I think we're... We could... Ooh. Let's go a different way. I think we were safe there going west, but um, well, let's go this way, actually. Jeff suddenly identifies a scroll labeled Umbar as a scroll of monster creation. Okay, we don't want to use that necessarily. Let's just drop it. I don't know enough about the game. Oh. Um, how do you drop shit? You can throw it. <coughs> Let's save it, and we'll uh, we'll throw it at the next monster we meet. See if they can give him a paper cut. <laughs> sure, I guess. Nope. Um, T for throw. Let's throw a scroll of monster creation to the north. Oh! Oh, sadness. That's bullshit. Thomas. Fix it. All right, guys. Well, that was a, a cool um, intro to the game. We didn't finish the game. We didn't die or 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 live, and I'm liking it. So I'm going to record a second uh, video of this. Um, I'll, I'll I'll do another Jeff the Grog. I, I was thinking I should put it in something else just to see how it affects the character. But we know Jeff the Grog was kind of successful, at least until that. Maybe we won't throw anything ever again. But how do you drop stuff if you? Uh, how do you drop things? The only reason I threw that is because I couldn't figure out how to drop. Oh, am I, am I allowed to continue? Never mind. All right, fuck it. There's still an error, but whatever. We're still in this game, thank fucking God. Play for another... Th we'll finish this level, and then we'll call it quits before going down to dungeon level. We'll call it quits when we go down to dungeon level three. Short sword. We can't get it, probably. Let's figure out how to drop things. D does not work. Uh, let's try C. Nope, that didn't work. I was thinking maybe, maybe the opposite of pick up. Use, throw. I'm afraid I'm afraid to throw anything else else because of um Yeah, you left out the the the, the um information on how to drop things. I. Maybe I can just press D for knife. No, I was trying to equip it. Hmm. Well, we don't need the short sword necessarily. Let's leave it there. I'm afraid to throw anything else in case we get another exception error and it fucks up the game. My cursor because it's bugging me. Keep an eye on our health, but I think we're okay. We've killed many a zombie so far. Let's see if our spine ting. Oh, we're hungry. God damn it. Let's uh, use an apple. A refreshing snack. Yep. <clears throat> Thought that'd be a secret door over here. Another one. I'm guessing this just goes between rooms. There's probably no reason to even pursue this angle. Go north and watch out for any warnings of danger. All right, let's get out of here. Ooh, a potion of clear thoughts. I don't know what that means, but that's what it is. Dagger is plus two. 1d4 plus two versus what are we using now? Our um, mace is 1d6 plus three. Definitely not going to use the dagger. But I don't know how to drop it. So we'll wait till we see a monster. We'll throw it at the monster. Maybe the code is in to allow it to hit things, but it's not in if you, if you throw it at nothing, you know? Oh, I'm hungry again already, eh? Let's use an iron ration. And then let's... Enter. To enter, as it were. Alright, this is fun what that is, for the record. Oh, a leprechaun. 
in um, the original Rogue, those would be sitting on a pile of gold, and then if you uh, approach it, they'd attack you and teleport or something? I don't remember how they do exactly. I'm a little instinctively afraid of it. But at least it's not a louse from Moria. Um, so we're going to save it right here, guys. Or at least I'm going to stop playing. I don't know if there's a way to save. Let's just find that out for the record. Yeah, saving quit uh, with Q. Let's try that out to make sure it works. All right. Shift Q, capital Q. Do you want to save and then quit the game? I do, sir. Uh, select a zero. Fare thee well, brave adventurer. We shall meet again. We will in my time in about 60 seconds, in your time in 24 hours. Thanks for watching, guys. It feels good to be back. I'm enjoying this game a lot. Um, definitely check it out. I'll include the link. Maybe just don't throw things until we know more about what that bug was. You want to play again? Um, well, I will in a second. I'll stop recording. See you soon, guys. Uh, where's my goddamn mouse? Got it. See ya. <laughs>